Hi, everyone. This is Jennifer with Deep Believer. I'm just waiting for a few people to get on. Today, we're going to have with us Kay Miller. And let me just see. There's something happening right here, but I think it's okay. We're just waiting for a few people to come on. And uh, today, we're going to go over why so many of us have basically routine issues, uh, habitual issues. Um, how come sometimes when, um, say, we get paid, and right when you get paid, something goes wrong, the car breaks down, or uh, your kids have an emergency uh, with the dentist or the doctor, or how come some people just don't know how to choose a different person. You know uh, how they say, I'm not trying to say anyone is insane, but how some people say that the definition of insanity is, what is it? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Um, how come some women choose the same men wanting something different? How come some men choose the same women thinking that things are gonna change? How could even life, the careers, uh, Kay Miller is going to go over that, uh, and she's going to uh, share a lot with us today, uh, things that we didn't cover on Saturday. Uh, she's going to go even deeper. We had a little short time uh, right there uh, last Saturday, so I said, okay, we're going to bring you back on. So this is the live, and then uh, before we get started, um, I actually want to invite everyone. I want to wait for a little bit more people to come on, though. Uh Let's see, I'll wait about one more minute for a few people to come on. And in the meantime, let's see. Hi everyone, I'm gonna give my shout out. So Mrs. Ms. Shonda, great topic. It's good, it's a great topic. I feel like a lot of chains are gonna be broken today. Uh, Shalom, hi Kimberly, hi Brenda. Uh, hi Kathy from Atlanta. Uh, so Jojo, hi So Jojo. Hi Joanne, yay. Blessings from New Orleans. I've never been to New Orleans, but I do want to be there. Uh, hi, Zeal Heels. You're on here a lot. Hi, you're regular. J.R. Riggs. And, and guys, seriously, bring your questions because Kay is an expert in this field. Uh, and she's going to help out a lot um, to help you do things God's way. Uh, not our way, not the ways of the world. But when God's system works, it really, really works. And... Let's see. Hi from Atlanta. Someone else from Atlanta. Hi. Maybe I'll put you guys up here. Let me put you guys up here. Uh, hi from Atlanta. How you doing? Harriet. And is this Kayla? Oh, cool picture. Hi, Kayla from Dallas. Hi, Kayla from Dallas. Let's see who else we're going to put up here. Granny Faye. Oh, that's a cool name. From Fairfax, Oklahoma. May God bless you abundantly and you as well. Amen. And everyone watching as well. Too. Let's see who else. Shakira. Blessings from Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri. All right. Uh, hi, Jessica. Jessica Maxfield. Hi. I love you guys' pictures. And what time is it? We're going to, we're going to, let's see. It's about it for now, I'm thinking, until someone else joins on. But um, all right. So, if you guys have not, if you have not registered for, for the show, I'm sorry, if you've not registered for the ball, the Royal ball, why is it Royal? People ask, because if you are a child of God, you are royalty because you are a child of the most high. Think of any Kings. Remember Queen Elizabeth. If you were to say Queen Elizabeth and her grandchildren, her grandchildren are Royal. Why? Because they're a part of her bloodline. We are even more so royal because our father is God the father and we're his children. So this is a royal ball in complete honor of Jesus Christ. No one else would be honored at all except for Jesus Christ at this ball. Uh, we're going to have workshops for knowledge, hands-on knowledge to teach you so you can go out into all the world and you can use the same uh the same, I don't want to say methods, but methods uh, that we see all these people on YouTube use or people on TV, how they have the gift of healing. Well, we have that too. Jesus gave all that too. He said that um, we'll get more. We'll get even more than what he did because we're here longer than he was on the earth. Um, so I am going to show you guys another, hi from Bahamas. I'm going to show you guys just another trailer and then we're going to get started with 
K Miller is only $275 um, a night for two nights, which is nothing. We cover food. We cover um, the event. We cover everything. All we do is ask you to just book your room. We just want you to book your room. We just want you there. We want you to be in the glory of God. Um, we have a lot of wonderful, wonderful uh, people who are blessing us. We have wonderful entertainers. I hate to say entertainers, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be ballroom dancing, um, but but it's all for the glory of God. So I'm going to turn it on right now and a night with the king at the Broadmoor. Ever wanted the experience of attending a genuine royal ball? Well, here's your chance. Join Deep Believer Ministries for one of the grandest, most powerful events ever to solely honor King Jesus with a night with the King at the Broadmoor. Enjoy the magnificent grounds, accommodations, and fine dining of the five-star, five-diamond, exquisite Broadmoor Resort in Colorado Springs, Colorado. A night with the King at the Broadmoor is a very royal, very formal three days, two nights conference that will provide you with hands-on training for true, Christian, supernatural living by renowned teachers and evangelists. This includes training in multiple areas of healing, deliverance, spiritual warfare, how to walk out the abundant Christian life, as well as how to obtain success in finances God's way. Then, for the royal evening, Soak in the ambiance of white tablecloth gourmet dining, live brass and stringed instruments, acclaimed Christian singers and worshipers. And what's a royal ball without ballroom dancing? Don't know how? Complimentary ballroom dance lessons are included. A night with the king at the Broadmoor will be a night of complete honor and reverence to our King Jesus and will be like nothing you've possibly ever experienced. We hope to see you there for this stately, eventful night. All right, so that's that. Everyone, if you have not, if you have not registered, register today. We are filling up actually faster now, so something's happening. Um, but we do have a limit, and it's going to be wonderful. Also, I would like to introduce one more time Kay Miller. Uh, really quick, Kay Miller... Uh, she was, she lost everything in her life, uh, in her twenties. Uh, she was diagnosed with cancer the same day she was diagnosed with cancer. She found out that her mother had a rare form of uh, epilepsy the same day her car blew up. She was like, what more can happen? She prayed for three days after that. And the Lord took her to heaven and he told her something wonderful. I'm going to let her share that with us so we can continue on from last Saturday. And Kay Miller, I would like to invite you on. Thank you so much, Kay Miller, for being on with us again today. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. And um, I don't know where you'd like me to start. What do you think? Well, you know what? I want you because there are some things that you didn't mention uh, in the last interview, which I feel like is key. And these are the three things when Jesus spoke to you, there were three things that Jesus asked you because you said you, you want to know, you wanted to know what it was like to have something in life, you know, like to have something that was prosperous, even though life is not about gaining material things, but you were 26 years old. This was the mind of a 26 year old. So Jesus asked you, number one, what was number one? And then number two, number three. Number one, with everything I was asking for, he said, I will withhold nothing from him who walks in righteousness. I said, but I know that that's the word, but the things I'm asking for, are they out of bounds? And he said, will you ever love it more than me? That was the first question. The second was, will you ever love it more than anyone else? And I said, no. And will you give it up if I ever ask you to? And I said, yes, I will. And, and she, first, obviously you answered everything correctly. Yes. He said, I will give you whatever you write down, whatever you ask for. Amen. And then you got everything that you asked for and more. But the one thing we didn't mention that you didn't mention in the last interview, because we had to cut it short, is that you did have to give it up and you were willing to give it up. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Because our viewers haven't heard that part. Well, I did get, um, the the incredible success 
I helped a corporation go from 1 million to 10 million the first year, the second year, 20 million, and then the third year, 30 to 40 million. And I worked with them for seven years. And then they were moving their entire business to Mexico. And they were going to open Mexico and South America. And they wanted me to come with them. And I couldn't leave my mother. I didn't want to leave her alone in Houston. Uh, you know, I, she didn't need much of my attention, but I didn't want to leave her alone at all. And so uh, where she could call me if she needed me. So I gave up that job. That was an extremely well-paying job. I had unlimited use of the chauffeur-driven Rolls-Royce. I had uh, unlimited use of the yacht. I ran the yacht and, and marketed the cell phones on the yacht on the weekends. Did that for seven years. And I had other perks and bonuses with the companies like First Class World Travel. Uh, they gave me all paid vacations, you know, all over the world. <laughs> so, and, and I do being first class. So I gave all that up. And then I said, well, where do I go from here, Lord? And he said, I want you to start teaching the keys. And I said, well, how do I get started? And he said, I want you to start with a breakthrough workshop that's going to teach people how to break the strongholds in their life. These patterns we were talking about, these patterns that are relentless, that no matter how hard they fight, it's like being on a hamster wheel. They just can't seem to get ahead. They just can't seem to move their life forward. They can't seem to meet the right kind of people. They can't seem to, you know, get ahead financially. So I started with those workshops. I started with $3,000 that I invested in my company. I did not have offices. And I was working out of my car. And I got started there. In two years... I had um, a whole quarter of a floor of offices at over 20 marketing companies that were helping me market. I was doing all my events at the Ritz Carlton. I had two recording studios, two penthouses. I purchased my own Rolls Royce and I wrote a check for it. And I was earning about $250,000 a month. So whenever God cuts you back, a lot of people don't understand the pruning, but he will prune you. He will cut you back. And if you're unwilling to do that, he can't take you from glory to glory and level to level. So not going to Mexico with that company was the best thing I ever did. And starting my own company and, um, you know, becoming radically successful. Then I ran that company for 10 years and helped thousands of people. I work with executives with AT&T, um, Exxon, Bank of America, Smith Barney, Merrill Lynch, um, just to name a few, Mary Kay leaders, leaders and Mary Kay, uh, the directors, the nationals, and went all over traveling and speaking for them and training, doing workshops and running my, my uh, business here in Houston. So then the, the day come, game, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> that God said, shut it down. I've got something else for you. So I told all 20 of those marketing people, the marketing companies that we would not be marketing for a while and that God had told me to stop for a moment, which I did. And um, then as I was sitting in my penthouse, I had lots of money. That wasn't an issue. Money that would last me for years. If I did not work, I could have retired actually at that point, but I was sitting there and I was crying out to God. I go, you know, I always want to be on my path with you. I always want to be in service to you, Lord, and getting these keys out. So what do you want me to do? Days went by. I cried myself to sleep. I was really, really frustrated and concerned. And uh, I just waited on the Lord. I said, what do I do now? I don't know. Why aren't I hearing from you? I think he wanted me to just rest at that point, but I don't know how to do that. So finally he said, write a book. And I said, no, wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. I don't know how to write. I don't have a computer. All my secretaries did that. I don't type. How am I supposed to write a book? 
And he just repeated himself, write a book, put the keys in a book, put the mysteries of the kingdom in a book. So I did that. And um, it took a long time because I'm not a prolific writer. <laughs> so I wrote everything down. And then I had, uh, he said, uh, I said, well, how many do I order? He said, order 10,000. I ordered 10,000. And there they sat in the warehouse. And I'd been asking him all the while ago, how do I market these books? What do I do? And he said, we'll take care of that when the time comes. Well, there they were sitting in the warehouse. And I'd read this crazy little story about how Chicken Soup for the Soul got out, that it was picked up by the news group, which is Hudson News and all the airports, and that they actually did book signings for them. And I said, you know, I can ask for anything from the Lord. And he will do it. So I said, Lord, I'm asking you to get me in the news group. There's not very many books. You know, it's easy to get in Barnes and Noble or Books a Million and be one tiny book among thousands of books. But at the Hudson News, at the airports, they only have a handful of books to choose from. And so uh, through a strange turn of events, that were quite miraculous. I actually was, um, the book was given to the CEO's wife of the news group. She read it, she loved it. And she went into her husband's office and said, find her and buy every book she has. Put her in every bookstore that we have. And I want her to go on a, a tour doing book signings in the airports. So that happened and the book went international and people were flying everywhere with the book and I had unlimited speaking engagements in churches and in other organizations. Wow. So that was a lot of fun. So talking about giving up for God's next move. Amen. And this book isn't just like an average book because it's a book that is actually for every believer. I mean, and you even mentioned that at first you were giving this book away for free because you're like, I want everybody to know the goodness of God. I want everyone to know it. And you bless so many people with this book. Like you said, I mean, Mary Kay, I mean, you just shot up all these companies and, but it's not just based on finances at all, right? It's based on all of life, every aspect of your life. And let's talk about patterns, unhealthy, habitual patterns that so many of us all over the world make. How come we keep choosing the wrong friends over and over and over again and it never gets better? How come we cho keep choosing the same, say, partner? How come um, I just my bank account just keeps running dry every time I get paid? Why is everything a pattern? What is happening? All right. So tell us, what has the Lord revealed to you is the reason why? Because you say you know the root cause and you can help us figure it out. Well, he gave me two illustrations because I'm a mechanically minded person. And the first illustration was a slide projector. He said, my creative flow is like the light in the projector. And whatever slide you put in that light it is going to project, it's going to cause, like the light beams would be the circumstances, being in the right place at the right time, meeting the right or the wrong people, whatever's necessary to produce or manifest or bring into reality those beliefs, those deeply held beliefs. You've got old beliefs that can be very deeply rooted in that projector, in that cartridge. And as it goes around, it's as the cartridge turns. Remember the old soap, as the world turns? Well, it's as the cartridge turns. And they keep dropping back in. And every time they project in your life, they simply reinforce that belief. They drive it in even deeper. And people say, yes, but this does keep happening to me. And I go, I understand that. You know, it is a deeply rooted belief. And in order to stop the pattern, we have to pluck out the slide and replace it with another slide. Another image of how this works is that the, the mind is like fertile soil. 
and you have beliefs that were planted when you were little about how you felt about yourself, athletic or not athletic, smart or not smart, you know, uh, well-liked, popular or not popular. Those beliefs were planted in your subconscious soil many, many, many years ago. And every time they outcropped, every time life would represent or life would mirror what had been planted, it was just watering that either positive or negative belief. Because the laws of God don't care whether your beliefs are positive or negative. The laws are going to work 100% of the time. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you sow in that fertile field of your mind, and as it takes root, it will produce its fruit, which means it produces itself, its likeness in your circumstances. So let's take an example, Jennifer. If you have a belief that you meet the worst kind of men, like you're a magnet for jerks, okay? A magnet for narcissists that one after the other, after the other, that is a deeply held belief. That belief, unless it is identified and uprooted, it will repeat itself. So it will produce its fruit again and again and again. After it produces its fruit, it goes to seed. And then it produces after itself. So it becomes a habitual pattern or a habitual cycle. So do you have scripture to back up what you just said? Yes. As a man thinketh in his heart, that is the deepest part of your mind, your heart level. And as you sow, so shall you reap. reap. And that according to your faith, faith, belief, and expectation are all interchangeable words. So if you say according to your belief, it will be done unto you according to your faith. It will be done unto you according to your expectation. <clears throat> and people have subconscious expectations. Like I'm probably going to meet another guy because there's no good guys out there. If you have a belief that there's no good men out there, do you know what's going to happen? You could go to a party. I mean, this, this is a, a room full of men that are absolutely spectacular. I keep getting a little glitch here. I don't know where it's coming from. Let me back away from the camera and see if that's better. And so anyway, you could go to a, a party with a hundred fabulous men. If there's one crummy guy in the whole party, like a heat seeking missile, the circumstances will arrange themselves for you to meet that guy. <clears throat> Why? Because beliefs are self-fulfilling prophecies. According to your faith, be it done unto you. So according to your beliefs, be it done unto you. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's how life is going to show up. So when we have, and I've worked with thousands of people, and when we go in and we identify these weeds in the garden that are producing after themselves and we pluck them up in the name of Jesus by the roots and then plant new seeds in their place. And it's just as simple as saying, identifying the negatives and saying, this is no longer true for me in Jesus name. I do not accept it. I do not allow it. My new Belief system, my new truth is that God leads me to the most wonderful men. I meet the most wonderful men, godly men, awesome men. And then you replace the negative, you see. You don't hold on to the negative beliefs. When you hold on to the negative, you know how you hold on to it? Talk about it. Complain about it. Call your girlfriends up and say, yes, he turned out to be a jerk. What else is new? So does it work the same for friendships, material, um, 
say career wise, does it work for everything or is it just for personal relationships? It's every area of your life. If you have a slide or a weed in your garden that says that you, you have to settle for second best. You didn't get the house you wanted. You didn't get the car you wanted. You didn't get the husband you wanted. Um, you know, whatever. Settling for second best. That can be a slide or a weed in the garden. And so they will produce after themselves. Okay, so what do you say about those who, who have generational curses on them? Where uh, it was put in a family generation years ago, say from a great, great grandmother. And it goes from generation to generation to generation. What do you say about the generational curses that are on people's lives? Um, how does that pair with, with the way that we see ourselves and who we are in Christ? We break them the same way. This is no longer true for me. I break this curse. You know, breast cancer being handed down for generations. This is no longer true for me. I break this curse. On me, it stops here. It's not being handed down in the name of Jesus. See, the name of Jesus is the name above everything that has a name. And that's how we break these strongholds. I call them strongholds because in what's tricky about this in the mysteries of the kingdom is I will tell people what I'm telling you right now. And then tomorrow they will go and complain about their circumstances. When you complain, I make you a promise. You'll get more to complain about, more of the same. Instead of complaining about it or highlighting it or talking about it, break it. Say, this is no longer true for me. You don't have to continue to accept anything. I don't accept this. I break this in the name of Jesus. And I declare and decree a new pattern for my life. So would you say every area. So would you say this is the same for those who are not born again believers? Do they still have the same ability to do that? Because we can use the name of Jesus and it works. Well, how about those who are not born again believers? Well, they're doing it. They're breaking their patterns. In fact, I would say that in, in their case, there are many of them in the new age are doing better than Christians. Because Christians, so why do you think that? You think that they hijack the Bible and and use what oh, God yes. said? They yeah. use the laws. They understand the laws of God, but they don't want to accept Jesus. They don't want to become a follower. They don't want to make him Lord and Savior. But yes, it does work for them. Mm. God rains down on the just and the unjust. Mm. And many of them are more willing to practice <clears throat> these principles that I'm talking about. Then my fellow believers, Jesus says to cast down every negative thought <clears throat> and bring it under subjection. Amen. Very true. But we don't do that, do we? Um, while we were talking to people over the phone that were calling in to order the book, The Keys to Everything, there were people that wanted to tell me everything that was wrong in their life, even after seeing the video. They wanted to harp on it. And I said, but let's not continue to accept that. But it's my truth. It is true, Kay. You know, just reinforcing it even more, even during the conversation. So the Bible says it's not given to everybody to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The kingdom works from the inside out. You've got to clean it up on the inside if you want to control and stop what's happening on the outside. That's good. And I like how you mentioned the Bible verse where, where God says to cast down all evil imagination. And when you keep bringing it back up and back up is and back up, you're actually giving the devil so much credit for, you know, he doesn't have to have credit because God can work in your life. And then you said something to me prior and you said that the church has been robbed because the church does not preach the truth anymore. Why do you say that? There are three kingdoms. The kingdom that is at hand, that's the kingdom realm that Jesus walked in where all the supernatural happened. There is the kingdom of heaven. That's where you go when you die. And there is the kingdom that is to come. That's when New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem comes down to earth. The throne of God comes down to earth. And this will be his eternal kingdom 
right here on earth. So there's three kingdoms. They're only familiar with the kingdom of heaven, which is where you go when you die. And they don't know anything about the kingdom that is at hand or that it's their rightful inheritance or that they're supposed to go preach it. They're supposed to walk in it. They're supposed to experience the miraculous in it. They don't know any of that. They're praying and operating outside of the kingdom, even though the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. That means the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, and the will of Christ, the holiness. And then all these things will be added unto you. What things? The infinite possibility and the wellspring of limitless supply. It's where the fishes and the loaves came from. It's where the manna from heaven came from. From the kingdom that is at hand. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's right. As it is in heaven. So our call is to bring heaven to earth, not to wait out our entire lives to go to heaven, but to bring everything that heaven is. There's no sickness. There's no tears. There's no demons. There's no darkness. We're the head and not the tail. We've been given authority and supply to call heaven forth when jesus walked on this earth everywhere he went people were healed they were set free of the demonic strongholds they were delivered and the demons recognized him he lives in us the bible says it's no longer we that live but he that lives in us and he wants us to walk like he walked when he was here on earth and operate in miracles, take authority over the demonic, cast the demons out. Amen. Bring it under subjection. We're supposed to be mountain moving powerhouses that operate with no limits whatsoever. Limitation and lack are a lie. They're not for us. They weren't true for Jesus. So do you think that Jesus wants us to lack in any aspect of life? And do you believe that Jesus wants us to suffer in any aspects of a life? Want. The will of God is in 3 John 1, 2, as plainly as it can be spoken. Beloved. That's me and you, Jennifer, and everybody listening. Beloved. Above all things. Just pause on that for a moment. Above all things. I want you to prosper. And be in health. Even as your soul prospers. So does he want us to be like the Kardashians? God forbid. Awesome, you know. <laughs> but prospering. They're very, they're very wealthy. <clears throat> but are they happy? Very healthy. Yeah. They, they physically, you know, they seem to be healthy. Yeah. And then, but where's the prosperity of the soul? That's right. Yeah. So they're out of mm -hmm. God's will. Mm -hmm. Now we take maybe church lady from Saturday Night Live. Okay. Uh, she's very. Are you talking about Dana Carvey? Yeah. Dana Carvey. Carvey. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, can you say Satan? And so anywho. Uh, you take somebody who's in their Bible every day, relentless, studying, and in church, you know, never misses and loves the Lord, praying ceaselessly, tirelessly. But yet their physical health is failing. And they their finances are a wreck. They don't have enough money. They're not prospering. They are also out of the Father's will. Now, somebody may be throwing their coffee cup at the computer screen right now, but that's the truth. And if you read the parable of the ten talents, the two men that took what their master had given them and doubled the increase, doubled what they'd been given, they were told, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
the one who took what he'd been given and buried it in the backyard, didn't even put it in the banks for increase, was called wicked and slothful. And even what he was given, Jennifer, was taken away from him. The master took it away, just like the fig tree. It didn't produce, and Jesus cursed it. We are to bring increase. And so, uh, and then he was cast into the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where, where does that sound? I mean, what do we, what do we call that place? Sounds like hell, right? Yeah. H -E -double and double hockey sticks. He threw him there where there's uh, weeping yeah. and gnashing of teeth because he didn't bring increase. But is this only related to financial prosperity? Not on your life. It is related to your giftings. Mm -hmm. You need to bring increase to the kingdom. You've been given the kingdom. You need to bring increase to the kingdom. Increase to the number of people in the kingdom. That's right. Increase of knowledge. Increase of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Everything that God has given us, we are to take it and bring increase. Jesus said he came so that we could have life. And have it more abundantly. And when people say, oh, that's that prosperity gospel. They're mocking the word of God. Is what they're doing. They don't even know they're doing it. They're just listening to what everybody else is saying. They haven't even read it. They don't even understand. God is for prosperity. Amen. But as long as you will never love it more than him. You will never love it more than your brothers and sisters in Christ or your neighbor. And that you would be willing to give it up. That it's not so important to you. You see, it's the love of money. That's right. That is the root of all evil. That's right. And God, I believe that's why God gave you all that. Because he trusted you with it. And you were willing to give it up. And there's so many people who don't understand that the Lord doesn't want you to suffer. He wants you to process. Like you were saying, in every aspect, it's not just about money in the slightest. It's about everything, your health, your relationships, your walk with God. Everything needs to grow. Like what you were saying, everything needs to grow, 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 or else God's going to take it away, just like the talent. But I don't think people know that because they've been stuck in what the media said. And then the church grabbed onto it. 501c3, sorry. And then guess what? Everybody's talking about it. So this is why it's really important to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, because if you don't, you're going to be tagging along with the world, sounding like the world and sounding crazy when you have those who love, truly love God. And I'm not saying, you know, those who say certain things don't love God, but you look like the world and talk like the world while those who are doing the will of God are prospering in every aspect of life. Yes, you're going to go through, you're going to get sick sometimes you're going to lose money you're going to do all this stuff but you can still grow you can still escalate but it's a shame that a lot of the church has adopted if you suffer this is what god wants if you don't have well what does that make you do that makes you relying on wicked men because you'll always go to i have to be careful what i say on here but you will always go to the man if you know what i mean Jesus. Yeah. You always go, you won't rely on God and he wants you to rely on him. And then we're supposed to help each other. Just like when Paul, was it Paul? Was it Paul? Was it Paul or P I think it was Peter or Paul. Remember when, was it an ax when they brought everything, everybody brought everything together and they blessed one another. That was the church of Acts. That was the original one. Uh, yeah. You know, this is the perfect church. Exactly. No one in the church lacked. Exactly. That's what I'm yet getting at. Today, if we operated that way where no one in the church lacked, who wouldn't want to go to that church? Exactly. Who had a need, and it was like crowdfunding in the church mm -hmm. instead of just building a, you know, a bigger building. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, the congregants are suffering. Mm-hmm. You I know, so prosperity, Jesus came so that we could have more abundance, but more, he said more, yeah, more abundance, but not, um, not for anything other than the use that God would put it for. In other words, you're blessed to be a blessing. So answer That's me right. this, how can you bless mm -hmm. if you do not have it to bless with? That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, so when I $250,000 coming in a month. Believe me, everybody was blessed. 
<laughs> Amen. So it wasn't just for you. You blessed no. other people with it. It wasn't just no. me, 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 KKK. It was for others too. It's not just for uh, what uh, hoarding. You didn't hoard it. You Everybody blessed other people. That with Rolls it. Royce. Are you kidding with my chauffeur? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. I wish uh, I would have knew you there. I've never sat in a Rolls Royce. Just as a it was, it was fun, you know. <laughs> But it's not wrong to have bad things. It's like you said, it's, I mean, good things is when it has your heart. And that's the one thing God does not want you to have because when it has your heart, then it becomes your God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so a, a useful tool for people that were getting married. Mm -hmm. you know, wanted to oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Going to the theater or going out for a special anniversary. It was like the family car. It wasn't Wait, you brought that to the movie theaters? Oh, to the theater, like oh, oh, the oh, the theater that they were you dress up for, and then you have the like a pretty woman. What is that? The what do you call it? The goggles? Oh, yeah, the theater. <laughs> or they had an anniversary or special something dinner, nice, something nice, yeah. something yeah, like yeah, a yeah. special birthday, and they wanted to pick them up at school. Mm -hmm. You know, and the car was something gone nice. all the time. Yeah, and uh, it was the community car. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of fun for everybody. And when I got rid of it, they go, no. <laughs> but you didn't mind. So when you got rid of it, did you mind? No. Yeah. It was because just something else. you can get another one. That's right. Yeah. There's no end to God's supply of what he will give you. And he said he'll withhold nothing from those who walk in righteousness. So what do you mean when you said we could either be our worst enemies or our best asset? If you walk around and you decide to hold on to your negative beliefs that are not serving you or the kingdom or God, because he wants your light to shine from the hill. He wants you to look better and be better and have a better life than everybody else. Because that's how he wants his righteous to look. When people in the world look at the church and say, well, they're broke. None of their prayers are ever answered. They're dropping like flies. They're dying left and right. What's the big deal? You know, I don't need your Jesus. But if the church was standing tall and prospering, the most prosperous in every industry and the most blessed and abundant in every good way, in every area of their lives, with the best marriages, the best relationships, the most wonderful kids and beautiful lives, people might take note and say there's something about those Christians. They seem to be highly favored and abundantly blessed by the most high God. And I want to be blessed too. Okay. Now I'm a fierce warrior for prosperity within the right boundaries of the rules that God has set forth, that your soul is prosperous because the Kardashians, they don't have any happiness. They keep falling into one snare of the enemy after another. Their relationships are unhappy. It doesn't matter how beautiful they are yeah. or how much money they have or how big their house is or how many cars they have. They wouldn't give that up if God asked them to. That's true, huh? You're right. You have to have that relationship with him to be like, Lord, I love you more. And a lot of people are confused about the scripture that says, well, the rich man will have as difficult a time getting into the kingdom as a camel will through the eye of a needle. So many people took that to mean that wealth keeps you out of heaven. The kingdom he was talking about was not heaven. Jesus was telling him to give up everything and he would show him the kingdom that is at hand. Where the fishes and the loaves came from, where he turned water into wine. Where he made eyes for the blind man, where he laid hands on the lepers and they were healed, where he walked on water and spoke to the storms and said, peace, be still. And raised the dead. Jesus wanted to introduce him to the kingdom that is at hand. But the rich man, he was already comfortable. He was already well supplied. He already had good health. He said, I really don't need what you have. So when Jesus said it will be as difficult to a man enter the kingdom that is at hand. 
than it will be for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. He was just saying a rich man doesn't have an interest because the rich man is already well provided for. Mm. So he's not yeah. hungry. He's wow. not interested. And let's talk about fear, faith, and magnets. Because you said fear and faith both have something to do with magnets. What is it? They're both magnetic. Uh, you can think of it that way. You know, we're just looking at ways to put God's uh, laws into terms that we can understand. Faith. If you have the faith for something to happen in your life, you will be a magnet for the right circumstances to begin to unfold and happen like God's positioning system. I call it GPS, God's positioning system. He puts you in the right place at the right time to meet the right people, to get on the right webinar, to get the right information, to basically put everything together. See, we don't make anything happen at all. But when we have a belief that something is going to come to pass, that builds a bridge of faith and only your faith holds that bridge from where you are now to the fully accomplished end or answered prayer. Only faith holds that bridge together. You will become a magnet for everything that needs to happen. If you're in fear, fear is faith in the negative. We'll say that one more time. Fear right. is faith in the negative. That's what that my last interview. I Fear. did. Okay. But God commands us. Yeah. There's multiple places in the Bible where God commands us. Do not fear. Fear is a spirit. Right. Cast it out. Don't even allow yourself to fear for even a second. You see, we take these commandments of God too lightly. When he says, don't do something, that means don't do it. And when he says, Kate, take every negative thought, every one, and cast it down with violence and say, I will choose to believe and trust God for everything I've asked him for. I will not allow these erroneous thoughts, these invasive thoughts that are coming in to rob you of your belief. And that just causes the bridge that was already there. You couldn't see it. It's kind of like on uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark when he's stepping out off the edge of the cliff. And oh, that's my favorite part. I'm sorry. Is that the one with Sean Connery? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and the I would hold my breath when I see that. Okay. Forms as he's walking. That's the true walk of faith. That's right. Where you take the steps forward, even though you don't know how it's going to unfold. You don't know how God's going to bring it to pass. Amen. But he says he orders the steps of the righteous. So he will bring it to pass. Amen. You know, I just got a notification. Someone wrote in saying that it was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. yes. Did you say that with Sean Connery. But and it's, uh, it's that other guy. What's his name? Harrison Ford. Yes, him. He's the main guy. Yeah. But I I mean, like, if you guys maybe go Sean watch this. Was in, it. He was in that one. Yes. And how he put his hand. Is it the last arc? Someone just told me. Let me see. I got a text because they're enjoying this conversation. Oh, the last crusade. Sorry. The last crusade. And like you said, he, there was a, what was it? There was a, what do you call it? A, a gap. But, and so basically he went into Petra and it was some kind of temple. And to get across, there was no way to get across, but there was a big old. Like a chasm. A chasm. Yes. Perfect. Like what's in hell. Right. And like then you could fall in yeah. and keep falling for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you say. People are saying yes. And then he, he had to put his hand over his heart and believe that there will be a path provided for him because he would die if it didn't happen. And as he began to do it, a path began to form. So like what you're saying is so powerful. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how God's going to do it. I just yeah. know he is. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. And you're right, because we can't understand God. I mean, like, if we could understand yeah. God, that would make us God, right? We would be equivalent. But our job is not to know how, it's to trust him to do it his way. And sometimes when we ask God to do things, God, do it like this. God, give them a dream. God, but his, sometimes he's like, that's not how I'm going to do it, though. That's not, you know, like, so we have to trust him and not give him orders, but allow him to just take the stage and, you know, lead the way as opposed to us trying to take control. But I'm loving this, Kay. This is good. God will order your steps. Amen. You know, and uh, people go, well, I'm just going to let God do whatever he wants. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask for anything. I'm just going to, God will just do it, you know. But what does the word of God say? He says, you have not because you ask not. not. Whatsoever you ask for, believing that you receive it. You will have it. See, there's rules to this. You can't just ask and not believe. And you can't believe and not ask. You have to follow the rule book. You have to follow the word of God. And, you know, um, heaven's very shiny. If you think about it, there's streets of gold. People looked at my life and they go, oh, you're so bougie. You're so over the top, Kay. You know, all your diamonds and your <laughs> travel and your Chanzelay Poo Poo apartment, you know. What is Chanzelay? I think you made that up, right? Because I asked you before, Chanzelay Poo Poo. It's like a made up phrase. You're me. making me hungry. I kind of want food now. Chanzelay Poo Poo. And, uh, you know, who's not food, but yeah. Love your antiques and your art pieces and da da da. And um, I didn't care about any of that. I thought it was pretty. And I wanted to have it. And uh, people enjoyed it. I had several parties. And everybody enjoyed uh, coming to the penthouse. And I had two penthouses. They faced each other. And so my kingdom friends would come over and we would enjoy the penthouses. There's nothing wrong with having a good life. There is something terribly wrong with loving it more than God. That's right. Because God is the giver of all good things. And heaven, I go, well, if you hate this bougie life now, wait till you get to heaven. Oh, there's seriously. Gold and there's doors of a single pearl. You're going to hate single it. Pearl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the crystal yeah. river and the beauty is beyond your wildest imagination. Yeah. So what do you say to those who have been trained differently? Because I know that, and I know I said this earlier, is that a lot of those who believe differently didn't get that from themselves. They didn't get that from the Bible. They got that from knowledge someplace else. They got it from whether maybe they were, their parents taught them that. Maybe their churches taught them the opposite. Just, just believe the word of God. That's it. Just, That's just it. believe the word of God. Don't, don't parrot what you've heard from other Christians. Don't parrot uh, just what you've heard. You know, they say that's that prosperity gospel. I'm going to tell you right now, the gospel is a gospel of prosperity. That's what it is. Abundance. There was no lack. They had 12 bushels of fishes and loaves after they fed 5,000. In the kingdom, it is a land of more than enough. It is a realm of more than enough. You cannot be blessed to be a blessing to others if you don't have more than enough. Now, if you don't like the lifestyle that I chose, God has given you the infinite capacity to choose your own. If you want to live on a farm and have chickens and raise a garden and wake up to the cackle of chickens in the morning and go milk a cow, I'll come visit and we'll do it together because I like that lifestyle too. Mm -hmm. I, I love the country. I love animals and I love milking cows. I love feeding chickens. I love the sound of chickens. I love the rooster in the morning. I love watching the sun come up when there's still a dew on the grass and you're sitting on the front porch in your rocker with your quilt over your legs and it's a cool morning and you're having your hot cup of coffee and the cows are mooing, and the horses are whinnying. There's nothing wrong with that lifestyle. Everybody has their own preference, and everybody should be free to choose 
what they want in the kingdom because the kingdom is an unlimited realm. There are a thousand lifestyles, hundreds of thousands of lifestyles in the kingdom. And you can carve out yours. And why put down somebody else's lifestyle just because it's not what you would pick? It's like when you go shopping for a car. Some people like sports cars. Some people like SUVs. Some people like Cadillacs. What difference does it make? We have an unlimited uh, father that will give you the desires of your heart because that's what he said. I will give to you the desires of your heart. And people have made prosperity wrong in the church, having a, a really beautiful lifestyle wrong. But yet when you make more, you can give more. And I was able to give a lot. Amen. So I'm definitely not for the prosperity gospel as it's canned in that state, but I am for the abundance for the children of God. And I am for answered prayers. That's good. And I want to put this out there. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but the term prosperity gospel wasn't founded by the church. It was actually founded by, I got to say, the man, um, G-O-V. And um, it was actually, matter of fact, there was, I can't go into too much detail, but I do know that there was a man who was a Southern Baptist and he went to a very important building in New York City. I'm not going to say what it is. Just use your Ooh. imagination and build them with a lot of power. And this building with other pastors around America and around the world, they told them to keep preaching against any type of prosperity in the church. Because if they keep preaching against the prosperity, and remember this, they keep preaching against, they call it a prosperity gospel because they're the ones who may actually made it up. If you keep preaching against that, they will rely on us and not God. And this is, and after that, he said he left. He said, I left. He said, I left the church I was going to. He said, I have to do things God's way. He said, this doesn't even sound right. So it's not even, they make it sound like it's awful to have, things to bless people with but that's why we're here to bless one another in every aspect of life in finances and and friendship and 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 like this conversation right now how so many people are being blessed and fed and their minds are being changed realizing that what i've taught have has not been the truth what i've taught has been lies to keep me under because god's purpose for my life is so much more abundant than what i've been fed from the churches or from my family or from my friends. God wants so much more. And that's why it's so good to have that personal relationship. And I feel like a lot of the churches have adopted that same personal relationship, not even realizing what a personal relationship is. It's just like you with your husband or you with your best friend. It's a personal thing. You talk to each other every day. It doesn't even have to be anything formal, but just that personal relationship. You get to know him. You get to know his personality. You get to know his character. You get to know what he wants for your life. And this is what Kay is explaining right now. So, Kay, I want to thank you for um, explaining a lot of what you're explaining right now. Letting go of lack and limitation. Jesus, they think Jesus was poor. Jesus was not poor. He had the ability to call forth from the kingdom, which is an invisible realm of infinite supply. That can be, you call those things that are not the things that are invisible as though they are indivisibility. Jesus had the infinite capacity to do that. So he could call those things that are not as though they are. The fishes and the loaves, the blind eyes, uh, the withered limbs, everything, the, the, a molecular reconstruction of Lazarus that had to happen and everything happens in the now. He had infinite resources in the kingdom. There is no lack or limitation or impossibility in the kingdom. There is infinite wealth in the kingdom. And when he needed money, he didn't get upset. He didn't lose his cool. He simply called it forth. He called forth what he needed at the time. Jesus didn't carry anything around with him, but he was the wealthiest man that ever lived. Amen. Amen. And we are too, right where you are, if you don't have a penny to your name, as a child of God, 
with your glorious inheritance of the kingdom that is at hand. You are wealthier than Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, and the King of England all put together. And let's throw in Elon Musk. They do not understand our wealth. Kingdom wealth is invisible wealth. It's infinite possibilities that we can call forth from the kingdom at any time that we have need of it when the kingdom is fully unlocked with the keys that unlock the kingdom. Jesus walked, lived, and had his being in a fully unlocked kingdom realm. And when Peter's shadow healed people, it wasn't his shadow that was healing people. It was the kingdom. See, when you go and you say, he said, go, Jesus said, go and preach and tell them the kingdom is at hand. What does that mean? I'm coming with the kingdom. I'm bringing the kingdom. I'm bringing the kingdom realm that I'm a citizen of where all things are possible in the now. Where there's no limitation. And that's the realm Jesus walked in. That's where all the miracles happen. So if the enemy could get in early on, Jennifer, and take away the kingdom and get us to focus on nothing but the kingdom of heaven, then wasn't he very clever? Because he robbed us of everything we were supposed to have here and now. Not only for our own blessings, but to bless others. Now, you know, you talked about goals of a 26-year-old. Well, now I have the goals of a 65-year-old. A mature Christian and walking in the kingdom all these years. All I care about now is helping people get in the kingdom. And you talked about me giving away the books. Oh, yes, I gave them away by the case full. And I followed up with all those people. I was so excited, Jennifer. I called them up and I go, how is it going? Did you read the book? And how's it going with the keys? Oh, I haven't got around to that yet. Still in the cellophane. I'm going to do it, though. I cried for days. I said, what do I have to do? I can't even give the keys away. What is wrong with these people? You know, they say that even if you have a stray dog that someone adopts and they get it for free or a free puppy, that they take it home and they don't treat it that well and it's easier for them to give it away. But if they pay a little something for the puppy and they get the shots and they, they have to pay something for the dog, they put more value in it. So it was like throwing my pearls to swine who could have cared less. They just got it for free. You know, we do have a benevolence department. We still do. And I have people call and, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. And, you know, I have nothing. I have nothing. You know, of course, confessing that is going to do what to your weed? What is that going to do to your side? Confessing that over and over again. They couldn't even have enough faith to come up with a little tiny resources for the infinite resources that come through the keys. But we still have a benevolence department, but those people are annoying. You know, okay, we were talking about this earlier. Um, this is one thing my father always taught me. He said, it's nice to give things away. It really is. But sometimes you can't give everything away all the time because when sometimes when things are offered free people don't value it as much and it's mm -hmm. so true so if someone know that they invested something into it something even if it's like 10 cents whatever they'll use it but a lot of times the average person is sad to say don't cherish free um but like you said some it could be annoying because you're doing it from the kindness of your heart and they're not doing their part you're doing it to see how the lord is going to bless them you want to see the outcome you want to hear the testimony but you never get around to it because i they feel never like i'm almost it. cursing them like here's the keys i know you're not going to read them i know yeah. you're not going to apply it i know you're not yeah. going to do anything with yeah. it and a lot of those people that end up at the bottom of life is because they don't take action they don't do anything about their circumstances except complain about them. And whatever you complain about, you get more of. That's so true. Hey, Kay, I want to mention something really quickly. So as we're talking right now, I want everyone, um, 
if you have questions, um, ask away and then we'll get to your questions. I'm sure Kay has answers for you. Um, and we're going to get to your questions, especially Kingdom Bound. That's a good question, Kay, right there. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I want you to talk about really quickly, you said that um, God does not withhold from the righteous. Could you explain what that means and who are the righteous? The righteous are those that have been through the rites of passage, the baptism of water and uh, spirit and fire, uh, and that are living it, that are walking the will of the Father. You know, he, Jesus said that the only people that are going to join him in the kingdom of heaven that when we die are those in the kingdom to come are those that do the will of the Father. So it's not just enough to say the sinner's prayer and dunk and go, you know, it's not like that at all. We have to walk it out. So the people who are walking it out and who are true followers of Christ, which means we follow him. And that sometimes means not following the guy with the tie. You follow Christ, not a church, not a doctrine. We are all followers of Christ. And so the righteous are those true followers of Christ. And you know and what? And you said something from us. I'm sorry. Sorry. I no withhold that. nothing. And I've got, I'm living proof of that. Amen. Amen. And then you said something too a few days ago, maybe last week when we spoke, uh, you mentioned how the church has got some things wrong. And one of the questions or one of the comments you said was the church only not, I can't, we can't say a blanket statement, right? But you said, it seems as if the church only teaches about one kingdom and that's the kingdom of just getting saved. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You're getting baptized and, and everything. So you can go to heaven when you die. And then after that, then what? No mention of the kingdom that is available here and now. And, and that's Jesus what Jesus talked about too. His primary commandment after love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, after that primary commandment and to love your neighbor as you love yourself, the next primary commandment was go and preach. And that's every Christian. And they go, well, I wasn't called to do that. I go, have you read your Bible? Because Jesus commanded all underline put it in all caps and underline the word all he commanded all of his followers that's every single one of us to go and do this to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom that is at hand operate in it these signs will follow my believers i'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover they'll cast out demons and they'll pray in other tongues we're all to do that and that only happens in the kingdom amen so we're all commanded to do that. I like how you say command. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command from the Lord God Almighty. I hang on his every word. Amen. And he has blessed me exceedingly above all I could ever ask or think. And uh, it, it's just been so. So somebody was asking, where did I get all that money? Well, I was teaching personal development that was biblically based. They said I couldn't do it. I was on the stage with Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy. I gave thousands of seminars and they were all biblically based. Uh, breakthrough class was how to do what we're talking about in this presentation, how to uproot those weeds that are producing after themselves, how to pluck out those slides they keep projecting in your life over and over again and replace them with new ones. Now, how to do that is also in here. It's in the keys to everything. So let me hold this where you can see it. And I just want to let you guys know that I got the book and I told Kay, ask me if I read it yet. I Saturdays, did. I'm wiped out. Ask anybody. Saturdays, I'm wiped out. And I got her book Saturday morning. I told her, Kay, I'm going to read the first two chapters because she suggests if you open the book, the first pages say, Read two chapters a day and you'll get done in 14 days. Did you say 14 days? Right. Yes. And, and then and I fell asleep after chapter one, but even chapter one is good. Well, I tell everybody read as much as you can tolerate. Everybody's different with their ability to, you know, they've got a lot of things going on in life. Read what you can tolerate and still concentrate and you'll get through it. And for uh, the listeners, uh, for Jennifer's listeners on deep believer, we made a commitment uh, with the package, because it's not just a book. 
It's the book, The Daily Focus Guide. And it comes with uh, daily calls that are five days a week to inspire you to stay on track and apply the keys. Uh, but I added something um, special for Jennifer's um, listeners. And that is that I'm committing 30 days of Lifeline with my private number that will come with a letter with each package so that people can reach out and get their questions answered, get support and get the help that they need to use the keys and enter into the kingdom. So that's a huge commitment not to be over uh, used by people. Uh, there's still people that want to call and uh, still rehash the negative. And I tell them this is no negativity zone right here. Just we're only going to talk about where you're going. We're going to talk about uh, the life that you're headed toward. The more you talk about where you're going and the life you're headed toward, the faster you're going to get there. You cannot rehash the negative and talk about how awful your current situation is. It doesn't help. It just reinforces it. You've got to talk about where you're going and your faith in God to get you out of it. Not harp on what's wrong, but look to what God can do for you. And by my example and literally hundreds of other examples of people that have used the keys, they've turned their lives around. And it's all biblically based. So how did I make my money? By teaching biblically based principles in the personal development arena. That is a billion dollar industry. And they have left God out. Mm. They talk about the law of attraction. That is as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why would they plagiarize what Jesus said, reword it and put it out and detach it from our king. Yeah. So I just brought it back. And everything that I teach in those classes is what they're learning and um, the magic of thinking big and so on. But I connect it all back to the teachings of Jesus. And that's how I made my money is in workshops and classes and courses that I taught. And it was $250,000 a month. And now, hmm? and now we're you were doing God's way. You were doing his way. God's way. Yeah. And yeah. now, you know, they, they look for that Rolls Royce and they look for that success. So maybe that's why or how God used it. Cause he'll take all things and work it together for his good. I'm trying to get all these little dots off my face. I wonder I what that is. Uh, it's, it's, well, you look cool. It looks cool. You look, you're always active on screen. Yeah. There's um, <laughs> dots, you know, the, yeah. Uh, this is a new, I've not used um, StreamYard before. I think that's what it may be the wallpaper. I don't know. Yeah, it just yeah. could be the lighting or something yeah. or the way the yeah. virtual background's working. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, now we're we're starting a university that we're opening in the fall that, that has all of those workshop, workshops all packaged together. There's 14 that I've got ready for everybody to acquire. They can acquire these workshops and start their own career in personal development as a coach. I'm a master life coach and we license life coaches. And then we provide them with all the tools that they need to go and teach these skill sets. Hmm. And if I can make $250,000 a month teaching these principles that are God centered in the personal development arena, penetrating, we're like a spearhead going into the new age market, going into the personal development market, because the personal development market, when you leave Jesus out, it becomes new age. So personal development is really synonymous with new age because Jesus is missing. They use his laws. They use his principles of the kingdom, but then they leave him out. We're putting him back. We're Amen. building a bridge that's pulling them out of that false or deceptive teaching that is plagiarizing the word of God and not giving glory and credit where glory and credit is due. And we're reinfusing it with God-centered principles Amen. and giving them the same success that they want. They want success. They want a, a nice life. They want to be able to provide for their children, college education. So 
that's where the money came from. And if, if you guys are just, if anybody's just jumping on now, or if they missed it, you already have favor because Kate literally just said about 10 minutes ago, because you're watching this right now, you have 30 days and, and no one else has this. Obviously you have 30 days of what Kate? Of a lifeline. Of a it's lifeline. my private phone line to text any kind of questions that they have. And then I'll either, if it's something easy, I can just text it back, you know, because when I'm coaching hundreds of people at the same time, they have to be mindful of, of the load of that. Yeah, yeah. But I did want to give them that lifeline because I can quickly answer the questions. And if they need a phone call, I will call them and we'll discuss it. But everything specifically related to the material and to the keys for one-on-one -on -one personal coaching, uh, that's that's a whole other ball game. I do mm -hmm. offer that as well. And uh, they can call to talk to my office about the fees uh, for that. Okay. Uh, because it, it's quite intensive. And I might do one-on-one -on -one workshops with them, you know, if, if they want to do that. But, you know, so that that's it in, in the, the uh, keys to everything and the focus guide in the lifeline and the uh, daily calls that come afterwards after they complete their package is only $30. It should probably be more. You know? <laughs> <laughs> $30 is honestly for the amount I'm telling I just read one chapter. I told you, I just, and that was good, but you need to go deeper and guys, $30 is nothing. Um, and there is a little ten dollars for the shipping and handling, you know. Exactly. So you cover that, yeah. So um, so or no? I'm sorry, I spoke too soon. Yeah, no. We so the thirty dollars plus ten dollars shipping and handling. Okay. So the total drive out mm -hmm. is forty dollars. Okay. A small okay. investment for the wealth of information you're going to get to help right. you succeed in every aspect in life. Um. Okay. So let's go back to the question. So I don't get this question right here, but maybe. Um, Stephanie, you can elaborate. Stephanie Reese, my question is if you marry, do you do you understand that, Kay? Oh, or do I perform wedding ceremonies? I don't know, do you? I do. I'm oh, look at that. Okay. Oh. But okay. I, I I cried all the way through the last one. <laughs> it was a good friend of mine. And we were all crying and I could barely get through it. So I, I'm very hypersensitive about. Oh, that's sweet. You're so emotional. I love it. Okay. Um, let's see. Next question. Where do I start? Oh, same person. Where do I start? Well, we have a 1-800 number. And I don't know if this will be edited later and she can put the number up. But if you want to grab a pen and paper, it's a 1-800 number. And uh, I'll give you just a few minutes to, you know, scramble and grab a, a pen and paper. It's one 800 508-3798. That's 1-800-508-3798. And we're manning the phones up and I mean, our hours are long hours. We, we start manning the phones at eight o'clock in the morning and we man them all the way till eight o'clock at night. And so if you don't get through to one of our live operators, leave a message and we'll call you back. And, and when we call you back, it won't be coming from the 1-800 number. It'll be coming from one of our staff. And so it'll be um, an A32 number or a 713 number, but do look for those calls and pick up. We've had people that called in to order and I think they're just thinking that it's a spam call calling them back. But, uh, and we also encourage you to call back in. If you don't get in right away, call back in. We would have orders online like normal people in the modern age of technology, but in the update of our work uh, of our um, website, they accidentally took down the portal. And so we're scrambling to get that back up. But in the meantime, we don't want to, we don't want anybody to miss getting the package. So um, is there anything else that we have? Well, questions? Okay. Here's another question. Mechdom said the disciples and the early believers didn't have money. They died in prison or were fed to lions. What do you say about that? Okay. Well, the early disciples and early believers uh, did have money. 
uh, to get from place to place. And this was the very early church. And the book of Acts says that no one among them lacked. So they had what they needed. People that had more would go and sell what they had. They'd sell their land and their homes. And then they would give it to the uh, leaders, the apostles to divvy up so that everybody had what they needed. So that's, um, so they did have money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's another one. What do you do if you're oppressed by the very difficult family circumstances that are not of your own doing? You have the power to break them. You did mention that. You have the power to break those patterns to break those circumstances and to break free. Sometimes in order to break your family free, you have to break free first. So you break free first. And, and then, then the, rest of the, line, right? the airliner, when you lose cabin pressure, it says put your mask on first and then help those around you. Sometimes you have to be the one to break out. You have yeah. to be the one to denounce those patterns in Jesus name and ask for what you do want and don't put any limits on it because God's not putting any limits on you. You're putting them on yourself and you don't have to do that anymore. So long as you won't ever love it more than the Lord or more than others, it is the love of money that is the root of all evil, not having it. Uh, in fact, you know, in that parable of the 10 talents, the wicked and slothful, he was called wicked and slothful because he didn't bring increase. You have to really wrap your head around that. The master represents the father. It is a parable mirroring or representing the father. And if we don't bring increase to the good that God has brought us in every area, so let's not just hyper focus on finances at all. It's it's wisdom, it's love, it's joy, it's the healing virtue of God. It's the ability to ask and receive solutions to problems. It's the ability to cast out devils, put the enemy under our feet. It's the ability to set the captives free, which is what this shows about. If you're in captivity to a negative belief that you've had for a long time, this show is about showing you how to get free. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as saying, that's no longer true for me. Right. I no longer accept that. You can denounce anything and say, I'm now open to the blessings of God. I'm now open to receive everything God has for me in Jesus name. Amen. Um, Khalil, Khalil is asking, is the book on Amazon or do we order from your site? You order through the 1-800 number right now. So uh, to be very clear, that's your resource. That's your plugin. We took all the books away from Amazon because Amazon doesn't let us have our database. Okay. And I don't, I don't trust that. They I don't you. Our database. If we wanted to email anybody that were our students, we would have to go through Amazon to do that. They will not release my database to me. So I said, well, I don't like that. We can All do right. our own fulfillment. No problem. Okay. Um, and then someone asked about the lifeline. So they want to know how do they get the lifeline once they order the book? It will come in your package. There'll be a letter in your package that will give you my private line. And you can use that for 30 days. Okay. And that will give you that lifeline to get answers to your questions and i'm expecting everybody if if i'm your coach it's kind of like we're in the army now hoorah like, hoorah, hoorah. Oh, that's hoorah. Nice. so i expect you to follow the instructions which is to read what you can absorb every day and everybody's different some people read slower than others some people read fast and can still absorb it yeah. and read it with a highlighter and then if there's anything that's confusing or you don't understand fully and you don't fill out your focus guide until the book tells you to. Okay. You know, that's really, I'm sorry. That's really cool. So when I got my book, I expected just to get a book. I got a book and something fell out and there's a, a notebook study guide. And I'm like, Oh gosh. Okay. This is high end. So like even the book is a high end book because 
it helps you to write down your notes. It helps you to stay on track. It helps you with your goals. I mean, Kate's Kate's book is really good. It's not just some random book that you would just find somewhere in said thrift shop. This is a high quality book where you actually get two books. It's not just one book, you get two books. You get an actual literature book, I guess. And then you get another one where you can write down your notes and it, it, it instructs you, literally instructs you. Um, okay, so Stephanie Clear, I'm sorry, I want to go to Angie. I think Angie really quickly. She wants to know, well, she lives in the UK. She wants to know how can she get your book? We're not able to ship uh, anywhere but in the US and Canada right now. But in the fall or winter of this year, we will be opening the university with all the breakout workshops. And those will be available online so that a person can uh, become a member and then access all of that. So those classes will be everything that's in here on video so that they can watch the video, pause the video, take notes. They're all workshops. This is a workshop. There are things to do. There are things to write down. There's action steps. So it's not just a, a knowledge or head knowledge. It is a step-by-step -step process. So for my friends in Africa and Australia and all over the world, uh, we're not able to give it to you, but we're scrambling to get the university up and running so that you can partake as well. And we've set up uh, Elite Coach Seminary which is the name of the university, Elite Coach Seminary. It is a seminary, and uh, they will be able to uh, join our mentorship program and mentor other people that they're inviting into the seminary to partake of these classes and workshops and virtually get all of their classes and workshops covered so that they're not having to come out of pocket. It will be covered, and they can actually also purchase classes if they want to go into the same thing and do what I did, take biblical principles into the personal development arena. If you have a heart to do that, heart for marketplace ministry, we have everything you need. It's time for the church to stop imploding That's right. and start exploding into the marketplace. And we have the way to do that. Amen. That's good. Okay. So Stephanie cleared up what she said about if you're married, if you're married, where do you start? And then another, and this another, I'm sorry, right after that, there's another marriage question. I think it's good, but let's start with Stephanie. She said, if you're married, where do you start? Well, it's been my experience after doing this all these years since 1984, that marriages that have common goals together and that are pulling the wagon toward common goals stay together. You know, the old saying, the marriages stay, uh, the pray together, stay together. Well, they got to be praying for the common goals and they have to have common goals between them. When the goals become separate, then people go their separate ways. They go in separate directions. They don't have time for each other and they don't have a common goal, common vision. So for my married couples, I highly recommend that you get two packages because the focus guide, each person We'll have different things that they might private, you know, um, like with weight or health or whatever might be different. Uh, you know, a lot of the goals will be similar uh, or the same, but a lot would be more individualized. So it's best to get two packages if you're married. Okay. And then here's another one related to it. And I feel like this is important. Uh, it reads, does that imply if your spouse isn't born again, but you are? I found myself in a very difficult situation that the Lord has placed me in. That's a ministry in the ministry. And the best way to do that. My mother grew up in that dead, dry church that I grew up in that didn't believe in miracles. I believe that's why she was so hopeless and so depressed and wanted to die because she had no hope. I did not tell her what happened to me because I knew she wouldn't believe me. I knew she wouldn't believe it. She'd go, oh, well, she just had a crazy dream, you know. Was, Come on. You didn't go meet with Jesus. That's ridiculous. 
And so I did those keys without telling my mother what I was doing. I didn't tell her any of my goals because I didn't want her shooting up a negative torpedo to shoot it down. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a big dream and you're all excited? I'm going to do this business and I'm so excited about it. And you tell a few of your friends and family and they're like, what, what, what? And you can almost feel the air going out of your balloon. You don't tell people what you're doing if they're not believers like you. Mm -hmm. So when all the miracles happen in my life after the fact, and I'm in the chauffeur driven Rolls Royce and I'm going to the yacht and I'm in the penthouses and the rockets are leasing my penthouses for their parties. And I showed mother that I'd written down every single thing. And I told her that Jesus gave me the keys and I showed her the keys and I did the biblical correlation with every single key. And, and then the keys are in the Bible. And isn't it weird that the greatest theologians of all time have not identified them and don't know how to use them? Why do you think it is? Well, we, we lost the kingdom. So do you think they did it because of it was all because it was all head knowledge as opposed to getting information from the author? They just um, uh, made everything logical. You think they it just, just made everything came yeah. about study? Yeah, yeah. Not application. See, you can study that Bible till you're blue in the face, but until you start applying what Jesus says to do. You're not going into the kingdom. I can tell you that much right now. And so I, I just think that we lost the kingdom. Uh, the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness, which is his mind, his attitude, his belief system, and all these things will be added into you. We lost the kingdom. So they weren't looking for it. Hmm. Now, William Seymour found it at Azusa Street. And miracles started happening there that hadn't happened since the book of Acts. Pretty amazing. Amen. Amen. Um, let me see. Er Ernestine? Ernestine wrote, what was the number again? And I'm going to try, if I have to see how to edit this, but um, I'm going to try to put the number after this live on the screen. If not, please look in the description below. It's right underneath, right under the video. You'll see the title and then you'll see probably one or two sentences hit more you know have the number right there also um but what's the number again Kay? 1-800-508-3798 and, and we have operators standing by but not all hours of the night okay people need to sleep but <laughs> people calling. Get the number one more time i'm gonna put it in the description i'm sorry i'm gonna put it in the chat so what is it 1-800-1-800-508-3798 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay all right so we have that there uh let's see so one person said they already ordered this is camber um even though we already ordered the book today can they still get the lifeline or do they have to wait for the oh, book? you have it everybody has it the okay. letter is coming in the book okay so it's so she has to wait for her book to come first yes Okay. It, it will be in your book package and we are scrambling and we are going as fast as our little legs will go to get these books packaged and get them shipped out. So please be patient. Don't think we're just sitting around twiddling our thumbs. We're scrambling and running as fast as we can go to get all this done and get it out to you. And then we're going through the U S postal service. So uh, please use your faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. well you know i know there's been a lot of people who's been not a lot of people sorry there's been a few people who said i haven't got my book yet the episode only aired five days ago <laughs> so just give it a few times order and they they we haven't got our book yet I'm like yeah. Yeah. well you know we have to make a but it's good it's good okay because that means they are and put the letter yeah. in and yeah. pack it means it that they're wanting it they're and, and send them out so Please, please okay. be patient with yeah. us. And we're getting them out as quick as we can. And when it gets there, just start reading as much as you can tolerate every day and you'll get through it. 
and then fill out your focus guide as the book guides you to do that. And then that focus guide, we have people that have sent me pictures of their focus guide and it's literally just completely worn out. Like whole pieces of the cover are gone because they've worn it out focusing. Those are the people that have breakthrough. Yeah. Though it's intensity. It's called a focus guide because it's focusing your faith. It's designed to help you focus your faith in a greater way than you ever have before. Because if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been giving. Yeah. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity to do something different. To grab hold of these revelations that came from heaven to earth about a kingdom that I knew nothing about. Amen. So there's someone who says, I live in the Bahamas. So how long does it take to receive that package? Um, I don't know. I've never sent mail. How long does other mail from the U.S. take to get there? Yeah. So maybe a little bit longer than it would in the continental United well, States. And we are shipping to Canada. So it's just going to get there as quick as it can, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We're getting them out now, you know, so we're the first orders are being packed and shipped and there's other being packed and shipped in the order that they came in. So um, and we've get we've gotten a lot of people, a lot of couples that are ordering two at a time. We've got people that are ordering them for friends that uh, they want to share the video with. I tell them, don't just give that book to someone. Mm -hmm. Let them see the video first. And if they have an interest, if they say, ooh. That sounds interesting. I love to right. give you that book. Then you can give it to them. Say, well, I just happen to have an extra. So some people are getting some extras to have on hand. And uh, we can put as many as three in one pack. And so you only pay for the shipping and handling of the one book, but you can get three. So uh, some are getting extras to share with other people that they know. Okay. And then someone just gave us an answer. Lajanta, Lajanta backup. So she said it takes about, he or she says it takes about two days extra. Um, and let's see, someone wants to know, do you belong to a church? Yes, we have a covering and uh, it's, it's a good friend of mine. He was miraculously healed of a brain injury uh, over 25 years ago. His name is Clyde Nicholas and Clyde was so, overwhelmed by the miracle that happened so was his doctor by the way that he became an ordained minister and founded a church and not only did he found that church but he planted uh 30 more churches in belize so he became an apostle and started planting churches in other uh, countries so we're under his covering and we attend a Joan Hunter's church here in Houston. My husband and I were ordained in her mom and dad's ministry, um, Charles and Francis Hunter. And so Mark and I were both ordained in that ministry. And Mark served in um, John Olstein's ministry with uh, John's wife, Dodie. And he served in that ministry with Dodie for 10 years. So. Amen. Amen. And how many more questions do you want to take? I think we only have like two more. I don't, I think, uh, let's see. Okay. Stephanie, again, she said, can you please pray for her marriage and others on this webinar? So how about we do that towards the end? Uh, we're almost at the end. We'll pray for her marriage and everyone else's. Um, and then, okay. Here's one person, Yvonne, Yvonne wrote, hi, I just hopped on here. I went through a divorce last year. He was a single dad. He went back to a baby mama. I said I wouldn't fall in love with a single dad, but it unexpectedly happened again. Well, nothing happens by accident, unfortunately. It's not anything you planned, but according to the belief system, you know, you need to have a belief that values yourself so much that you will attract a man that values you. The more you value yourself and demand respect and value from others, the more you will be valued. So we'll pray for you with that you find your Prince Charming. Yeah, that's right. I just figured out what all this is with all these dots going everywhere. Uh -huh. 
sitting in a brown office chair. Oh, so that's messing it up. You think? Yeah, because it's high. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. never happened before because it's a high back chair. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I think if we remove it, but I can't squat that long. <laughs> <laughs> now my knees are going there. <laughs> the technology, everybody. Uh, any more questions? Here. Anyone has any more questions? What did Jesus look like? That's a good question for you. Well, I'll tell you, and this is something that isn't, of course, let me pull this chair back around. Okay. This isn't something that's a new question. Of course, everybody wants to of know course. what Jesus looked like. And here's the, the correct answer. Um, but I have to explain it this way. When the tomb was rolled away, when the stone was rolled away and Jesus came out, there were people that did not recognize him that had been walking with him as their disciples. Yet they did not recognize him. Okay. So when Jesus received his glorified body, he looks like what you think he looks like. He looks different to everyone. Now for me, he had fair, uh, medium brown hair that was wavy, a very beautiful countenance and complexion, a very peaceful very, very peaceful. And he had this incredible loving acceptance for me. And he knew everything. I knew he knew everything about me, everything that was wrong, everything that was right. He knew, he knows it all. And he still loved me and accepted me because he knows why I am the way I am. He knows exactly why. And the acceptance of him and the, the peace that passes all understanding that feeling when you're around him, he's just so peaceful and poised. It's it, I can describe him as peace, poise and power. And his eyes were beautiful and blue and piercing. Okay. But other people have said that his eyes are Brown. I saw blue when I saw him, they were blue and they were alive. Yeah. Alive. Yeah. Alive in his presence is overwhelming. You can hardly think about what he looks like when you're in his presence. You're just like a deer in the headlights. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we talked through, um, you know, soul to soul. I know our mouths weren't moving and it was very fast. It was just in real time. As I was thinking, it heard my thoughts. And I feel like that's what everyone says when they visit heaven, that we didn't, we didn't move our lips. It's as if, you can almost read each other's minds. You, you speak through. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. We have uh, another question. Oh, a, a comment. Father told me, Father God told me he would tell the one for me who I am. And it happened. Well, praise God. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So here's another one for you. Oh, this is another one. Same person <laughs> from another uh Post a uh, question. I asked God to send me a man who is best suited for me after waiting eight years on someone. Suddenly a man 28 started pursuing me. I am 52 and it seems weird. What are your thoughts? Uh, what to say? Um, mm, pretty big age difference there. Um, Pretty big. I would pray about that one, huh? Yeah. I would pray about that one yeah. because some some young men are are never were yeah. nurtured yeah. as a child, and they're confusing uh, the kind of love that you would have in a marriage that you should a healthy love in a marriage with really wanting a mother. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's good. That's good. Like the same when. Um, young women marry very much older men because a lot of times they have daddy issues or father issues. Um, this is a good question. Um, Vic, Vic Yudoka. I like that last name. Hope I'm saying it right. How to remove yourself from gossip without being rude. This is a good question. How well, do you do that? You don't always have to remove yourself. You can say, you know, if we were going to pray for them, how would we pray? 
I don't want to pray for them, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want to pray for them? Yeah, yeah. Should we pray for God to show them the error of their ways? Mm -hmm. And if it's mean spirited and it's uh, ugly, then just say, y'all, y'all are being so mean right now. I'm, I'm just going to go home mm -hmm. or being really mean. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he asked another, he or she asked another question. The best way to remove lust, even though you're born again and celibate. Well, All right, Miss Coach. <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. It's it's in the it's in the category of coveting. Very true. Very. And true. we're not supposed to do that. So mm -hmm. just refrain. Mm -hmm. Don't covet after something or someone wanting. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay so zeal hill she made a point it's good the devil can hear prayers too and answer so we have to be careful i don't know i don't think he's hiding behind every bush like everybody thinks he is of course he's <laughs> he's out there he's real <laughs> and he's been very busy lately <laughs> you know but um I, I he doesn't hear my prayers hmm wait would you, I'm sorry. Would you say he doesn't hear your prayers or that's what someone says? I forbid it. Oh, I agree. So the devil doesn't hear your prayers because you forbid it. Gotcha. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. All right. So faith. Sorry. He is powerless unless you give him power. Yeah, Here's an example. Pray. Jesus said that all the things he did, we can do and greater things than those. Can we go there? Can we agree on that? All the things he did. We can do because he said so. And here's here's it. If Jesus said it, that settles it. There's no getting around that. Well, when Jesus was before council, they were mocking him and they were asking him questions and he just stood there. You know, like, I'm not going to tolerate these clowns. And then they leaned in and they said, don't you know that we have the power to kill you? Then he spoke. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. He spoke when oh, necessary. I love that. Anything to me that I don't give you the power to do. That's right. That's right. Okay. So Faith asked question, is this too late to chase material thing than spiritual things for this time? I don't understand. That. I would say yes. Okay. We better be chasing the kingdom in the flesh. Oh, I get what she's saying. So basically the time that we're in right now, the end times, don't chase no. material things. Don't do no, that. we need to be uh, all in one accord. I'm telling you right now, we're in, it's about to, we're about to go into the spin cycle, okay? And now is not the time to really worry about uh, nothing but materiality. Our spiritual growth and our development in the kingdom to do the things that Jesus did, we need to all be chasing after that. Yeah. Amen. Uh, let's see. Uh, and let me see. We'll make this the last question and then we'll close out. Uh, Kanika says, my nine-year-old son wants to know how to stop getting in trouble, talking back and hitting things. His words. Thank you. So we got a nine-year-old listening right now. All right. All right. Okay. Well, you asked Jesus to help you. Amen. So Jesus, give me the strength and the character to listen to my mother and to do what's right and good and to follow you always. And he will do that. He will help you. And, you know, for people to think, oh, they're too young to come into the kingdom. They're too young to be baptized. Uh -uh. Do not prevent the little ones from coming into the kingdom. <laughs> because yeah. sometimes their prayers are more powerful than their parents. Yes, because they have that faith. They mm -hmm. haven't been tainted with doubt. Worry so, and unbelief. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I agree. 
I do feel like I know um, I know I spoke with someone years ago, uh, a deliverance minister preached all over the world, healed people all over the world. So I said to him, I said, what do you do if there's if you see a case that's like you're like, it's really hard for me to believe this. He said, here's what I do, Jennifer. I find a kid in the audience or in the congregation. I bring them up and I tell them to pray for this person. He said, I give them the words to say. And I pray. I say, lay hands on this person and pray this prayer. And then he said, every time I did that, it worked. He said, it didn't work with him because he didn't have the faith, but because that child had the faith, because they didn't have that doubt, they weren't tainted, it was healed. So because they're young like that and untainted. They're in the kingdom. They need to start walking it out. Amen. And there's no such thing. As, and boy, have I been attacked over this one. And I don't care. Yeah. There's no such thing as a baby Christian. And here's why I say that. Because in the book of Acts, they were baptized, and the next day they were laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. So true. Walking in the kingdom because mm. no one told them they couldn't. Mm. They didn't have Bibles back then. That's so true. They didn't even have Bibles. All they had was the world tradition that was handed down of the testimonies of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and that is all you need. Mm -hmm. It does not take years of Bible study or church attendance to become a, a mature Christian. That's right. All it takes is just a willingness to believe the word of God and begin to act it out and begin to walk it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we're going to close out. Um, thank you, everyone. Well, first, thank you, Kay. Kay Miller. Um, please get the book, The Keys to Everything. We're going to put the number up again. Let me find it. Uh, I'm going to try to edit this too. I promise I am. Uh, and regardless, it's going to be in the description. I don't know where I put this thing at. Uh, moderator, my moderator, could you put the number up? It was listed earlier. Could you just look? I found it. Never mind. Never mind, moderator. Um, yeah. So thank you, everyone, for being on. Uh, Kay is going to end us out in prayer again. You can order her book at 1-800-508-3798. Again, that's 1-800-508-3798. The keys to everything. It helps you in every aspect of your life, not just finances, but everything. According to the Bible, according to the word of God, nothing of your own power, but by the spirit of God. Um, and Kay, could you close this out in prayer? Um, I know Stephanie asked for prayer for her marriage and everyone else's. If you can include that in there too, that'd be great. Well, Holy Father, we just lift up this prayer to you right now in the kingdom where all things are possible. And I break every stronghold that has held them back from experiencing the fullness of their glorious inheritance in the kingdom that is at hand. I pray for every heart that has been broken, that it be mended and healed and that the balm of, of just uh, joy and love be washed over those hearts that have been broken. Father, and I pray for these marriages, Father, that they will be mended when they're in, in separate, when they're not in equal accord or, or, you know, equally yoked, Father, that you will bring them together in a greater way, that you will use some of these tools to get them to come together, to have the same beliefs and the same goals so that they're fighting for the same things together. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' mighty name in Jesus' mighty name. And that those that are single, that, that God will do a quick work. I'm asking the father to do a quick work to connect you with the right people. No more playing games, no more head games, just connect you with the love of your life. The one you're meant to be with the one you're meant to go through the days that, ahead with in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen and amen k miller the keys to everything thank you so much for being with us today on the deep believer show and guys this is even though it's live it's gonna you're gonna be able to keep replaying it over and over and over and over and over again you have a lot of golden nuggets um in this one so please um keep this one keep watching it and god bless you all God bless you all. Bye-bye.